Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Matt Mattern, founding and managing partner of a law firm with 23 attorneys that has offices all over the state of California and selected as a Southern California super lawyer every year since 2009. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Climate Benefit Concert. You're going to watch an amazing show for the next two hours. You'll experience music and dances of different genres from all parts of the world. In addition, there'll be messages from eminent climate scientists and leaders. Before we start the program, I'd like to say a few words about the reasons to organize this concert. You all know how climate change is taking a huge toll on humanity, but few of us are aware of how the melting glaciers in the Himalayas are causing an existential crisis for more than one third of humanity. The Himalayas, which mean the abode of snow in Sanskrit, are the third largest deposit of ice on the planet after Antarctica and the Arctic. They're melting faster than any other part of the world. And these melting glaciers are contributing to causing floods in South and East Asia. The recent devastating flood in Pakistan is a case in point. It has caused, uh, drowned one third of the country and caused 33 million people to become homeless. Many mega cities like Mumbai, Calcutta, Chennai, Dhaka, Ho Chi Minh City, Bangkok and Shanghai are all projected to be underwater, underwater by 2050. The melting is threatening the lives of 240 million people who live in the mountains and hills. Hundreds of thousands have already deserted their homes and become climate refugees. The rapid retreat and disappearance of these glaciers would have devastating impact on the people and could destabilize these entire regions and therefore the world. Therefore, it's essential that we take immediate action to slow or stop the melting of these glaciers. We cannot wait another 30 or more years for the climate to stabilize. We need to act now. Billions of lives are at stake. Fortunately, there's a potential solution to slow and possibly stop the melting that Dr. Leslie Field and her colleagues have been working on for over a decade. HCI, in collaboration with the Bright Ice Initiative and Climformatics, along with a team of scientists from different parts of the world, are planning a field trial in the Himalayas on a glacier named Chota Shigri in India. So it can be used to preserve glacial ice. The goal of the concert is to create awareness of this issue, to influence governments and policymakers to undertake policies and projects to protect the cryosphere and to raise funds for a field trial and the co-development of the potential solution to stop the melting of the Himalayan glaciers. This is the genesis of this climate benefit concert. We welcome you to the concert and request you visit the website, healthyclimateinitiative.org and donate generously to this great cause. No amount is too small. Most importantly, please tell your friends, family members, co-workers, or colleagues about this important issue to raise your voice and demand that this project and policies like it are enabled to preserve the cryosphere. We're all in this together. Thank you for your support, and we welcome you to this concert. While the world urgently decarbonizes, we're not saying you can skip that. You can't, we have to get to more sustainable solutions for energy and fuels. But uh, while we do that, um, you know, if we don't slow some of these terrible feedback effects, we're in big, big trouble. And there's really not much time left to make the difference. I've been hearing it remarked that the experts, this is the one field where the experts are more worried than the general populace. And you hear things, you know, we've been hearing things for years. Well, we've got till 2100. And then, well, we've got till 2050. Well, this next decade is the last chance we have to make a difference. And more recently, I've been hearing, you know, we've really only got three years. It's tempting to just look at this and say, somebody else is going to take care of this. It's very tempting to say that. If not me, who? If not now, when? The solution is to try to replace that lost bright reflective ice, that, that function of being able to reflect sunshine. Got a thin shell of silica around 
not beach sand, basically. It is hollow glass microspheres, but it floats. By the time we build up to something like one or two hairs widths of material on top of snow and ice, we can slow down the melt substantially. Every degree matters. Every degree is so worth fighting for. We are in a world of 240 character tweets and one minute insta reels. Short attention spans and instant gratification are our guideposts. Globalization and our addiction to cheap disposable goods are destroying our world. Technological change, shifting demographic patterns, increasing urbanization and unthinking industrialization has taken its toll on the natural world. Man has exploited nature for its own selfish needs and the demands of an ever increasing consuming society has pushed nature beyond its natural regeneration cycle. Early man respected the power of nature and learned to coexist with the natural forces. With industrialization, we have destroyed this balance. As the nightmare of the past two years have shown, Nature has a demonic power to destroy our world unless we change our ways. The world was brought to its knees and the godlike humans became mere pawns in nature's great game. It was a warning shot fired across the bow, which if unheeded will destroy the human civilization as we know it. Rising sea levels are destroying the coast. Deadly storms are ravaging parts of the world while other parts become parched and fields lay barren. Earthquakes, floods and fires have been increasing and the rising sea level from the glacial melt are threatening to drown parts of our world. Climate change has become an ever-present threat. Let us listen now and act. Let us spread the mantra of conservation, of healing and respecting nature and stopping climate change. In this segment, we introduce Shourendra and Shomajit. Pianist Shourendra and vocalist Shomajit perform, produce, compose music together across the globe. They specialize in curated projects, musical and experiments. The duo has a signature soundscape with the essence of the traditional forms draped in contemporary signatures loved by music lovers globally and digitally. Shomajit is a vocal student of the legendary classical maestro Pandit Ajoy Chakraborty and performs all forms of Indian music. Shorindru is a disciple of Pandit V. Balsara and Ustad Vilayat Hussein Khan and follows the German pianist Professor Martin Kubert in his new innovative approach of playing the instrument which he now terms as the Indian piano. The football legend Pele has performed with the duo. Asha Bhosle has voiced for this young composers. The duo's chartbuster music series, Tagore and We, is one of the most iconic projects of the songs of Rabindranath Tagore and is recognized globally as a new oriental and orientation of the genre. They have won the Mirchi Music Award for their debut film, Parapar. The duo has performed all across Europe, USA, UK, Singapore, Australia, and the Middle East, besides performing in all corners of India with their creative productions. To mention a few, they have performed at the British Museum, Pink Ball International, Test Match of the Eden Gardens, International Book Fair, Moore's Festival, Indian Museum, Victoria Memorial, Nehru Centre, London and NCPA Mumbai. They have performed extensively for the Indian Army, the Prime Minister and the President of India. They present the World Music Day in Kolkata every year on June 21st as one of the biggest celebration of the day in the country. An inspired India concert series every year. 
and are directors of several cultural festivals and productions in India and abroad. They have produced Broadway-style musicals Mahabharata, Bombay Meri Jaan, and Kohinoor, which got them great accolades. They deliver inspirational lectures, musical demonstrations for world-famous platforms like TED Talks, different acclaimed schools of music, literary festivals to promote Indian music and oriental ideas. They have delivered lectures at the Samford School of Music and the Music School in Germany. They organize fundraisers through their concerts to serve important humanitarian causes, which include support to flood victims in the Sundarbans or vaccination and medication camps during COVID. They are a direct connect to the youth and have a huge musical followership digitally and physically all across the globe as young ambassadors of Indian music. Krishna 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 ni bekani baro mucha kavan to Krishna ni Krishna Krishna ni Bekani Baro Tadari dani dere takundari kiti take tanum noom tadari tillana Tadari dani dere takundari kiti take tanum noom tadari noom noom tadari tanum noom tadari tillana Sani da pama gare tadari dani dere takundari kiti take tanum noom tadari tillana Dani dere takundari kiti take tanum noom tadari noom noom tadari tanum noom tadari tillana Januta jam ta dira dim Tanana tala kute ke dim Sani sadhani sade Januta jam ta dira dim Tanana tala kute ke dim Maga mare gama pa Januta jam ta dira dim Tanana nana 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 Januta jam ta dira dim ಕುಜಂ <laughs> Pamagari sani da ba ma da ba ma pa 
Dohar, the word in Bengali means chorus. Dohar is a group of folk musicians from Kolkata, India, with traditional folk instruments of Bengal. The group was co-founded by Rajiv Dash and Kalika Prashad Bhattacharya in 7th August 1999. Both the members came to Kolkata from the Barak Valley of Assam. Kalika Prashad and Rajiv both were lead singers and leader of the group. Unfortunately, Kalika Prashad died in a road accident near Garup village in Hooghly on 7th March 2017. The remaining members of the band have continued singing under the leadership of Rajiv Das and they always feel the presence of Kalika Prashad in spirit, presenting Doha. reality that we live in interconnected time. At the click of the button, the world is at our doorsteps. Technology, while the basis for survival during the pandemic, connecting us to our loved ones and providing some solace, has actually confined us. We live in small boxes where only we only hear opinions that agree with our views and choose to perceive anything else, everything else, as the other. Living in these narrow silos, the echo chambers have deafened our senses, where differences are something to be feared and stamped out rather than embraced. And this is exactly where the creative world can serve as the modern start, guiding humanity towards the light, towards hope, and possibly redemption. Music is universal, ladies and gentlemen. It touches the soul and pulls at our heartstrings, even when we do not understand the spoken language. From the Himalayas to the Appalachian Mountains, musicians sing of the earth and ordinary people and their struggles. They sing of the surrounding land 
and a connection to the mountain winds, the gargling hoots, and the verdant meadows. As we listen to this world music and see the feet tapping dances, borders are erased, and the human soul rejoices as one singular entity. Ladies and gentlemen, Pasifiglia is an instrumental quartet that specializes in ancient and world music. The group plays a variety of music from the medieval and renaissance eras to the present, mainly from Europe, but also from Middle East and the Americas. Their repertoire includes lute songs, madrigals, canzonas, processionals, and a variety of dance pieces. Casa Pedrea aims to transport listeners to another time and place, from fresh interpretations to ancient music, with emphasis on cross-cultural connections and, of course, humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, May I take the pleasure of introducing the members of Ensemble Passive They are Jean Eliot, Lisa Esperson, Tom Hanna, and Molly Johnston.
sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but thou. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears reap. How precious.
all possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger A bride Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday. Absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having us. We're Formidable Vegetable. Ooh, hi. <laughs> I think it comes down to, you know, the problems that we face, to me, comes down to one or two simple things. And one of those things is the fact that we see ourselves as separate to nature. You know, we're constantly talking about saving nature or saving the world, but, but that's us. We are the world and we are nature and we interact with every living thing and non-living thing around us. And so we've got a, a, a song now about about all of our friends, but it's not the human friends, it's all of the other friends that we have in the world. And uh, you know, even the microscopic ones that you can't see. So bear that in mind next time you're, you're walking around, that all the friends that you can't see are there helping you out, whether you know it or not. Friends are all around me, and it's my guess that they are with you too. Well, if you wanna keep them being friendly, treat your friends as you'd like them to treat you. Well, who are all these friends? I hear you asking. Right now, it feels like I am all alone. That we call home. Well, let me introduce you to some of my good friends, and you may recognize them as some on whom you. places, plants, animals, and other people too. In real life more than in cyberspace is. And friends don't always look or think like you. Rivers, 
bacteria. We're all friends, Arcaria. <laughs> We're all friends, Arcaria. We're all friends.
Enjoy the rest of the music, enjoy the rest of the evening. Introducing Rachel Bayman. Originally from Chicago, Rachel Bayman moved to Nashville at 18 and has spent the last decade working as a solo artist and collaborator in the songwriter roots and bluegrass scenes. Her first solo album was produced by Andrew Marlin of Watch House and established her role as a new generation political songwriter. She continued to develop her unabashed and defined songwriting style in her 2021 album Cycles, which while exploring new musical direction still, it stuck true to her style of flipping off the authorities one song at a time. Presenting Rachel Bayman. This is called Jokes on Me. Shine, chasing down every 
In today's world, the havoc brought by the indiscriminate use of resources has created a malice that has affected every aspect of our lives. Mental health issues are on the rise and so is discontent. Nothing seems to satisfy or, or make us happy. As we rush through our lives, let us pause for a moment and tune into nature's music through this segment on classical Indian music. This music is deeply rooted in natural elements. Ragas reflect the mood of the time of the day and changes with the seasons. Every note and every tal is harmonious to capture the indelible bond that man share with nature. Indian classical music originated from the sounds of the ancient Vedas and the natural elements. The seven notes were born and became the ragas. The ragas are inextricably linked with ras or emotions. When ragas and ras come together, they create a perfect harmony with the power to heal the soul and guide the lost. Introducing Shubarna Bhattacharya. Dr. Shubarna Bhattacharya is the co-founder and CEO of Climformatics with a novel mission to predict climate towards an environmentally sustainable future. Her passion in climate data science led her to work at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's Nobel winning IPCC Working Group 1. Shubarna is also a passionate Indian classical vocalist who find a seamless connection between Indian classical ragas in emoting and depicting the natural change of seasons and their impact on human minds, spirituality, culture and festivities. Shubarna grew up in a musical family in Kolkata. She has been training in Hindustani vocals since the early age of five with her first guru, late Srimuti Ratna Bandhapadhyay, and had earned her Sangit Prabhakar and Sangit Gunakar degrees at the age of 12. Since then, she continued her pursuit of music with vocal training or talim from the maestro, late Ustad Sagiruddin Khan Sahib and continued with her music performances during her research at the Indian Institute of Science and Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Research in Bangalore. After finishing her PhD at JNCASR, she came over to California where she joined her husband, Dr. Shonjib Shaha, a musician and scientist to continue her passion for music. She has trained under the maestro late professor Dr. Shishir Konadhar Choudhury in the Maihar Gharana for about a decade. Shubhana continues to perform in many Indian classical concerts in the US. She lives with her husband and two kids in the San Francisco Bay Area.
But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage Can seldom see through his bars of rage His wings are clipped and his feet are tied So he opens his throat to sing The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings, sings of freedom. Thank you. 
sea bird thinks of another breeze And the trade winds soft through the sighing trees And the fat worms waiting on the dawn bright lawn And he names the sky his own He names the sky his own
introducing Aditi Chakraborty. Aditi Chakraborty is a singer and composer from Kolkata, India. She is a professional and versatile singer performing on the All India Radio. She sings cover songs in Bengali and Hindi from the golden era of Indian music. She also sings Robindo Shongit, Nojrul Giti, Bengali folk, Bengali traditional songs and Shama Shongit. Additionally, her own compositions are on her YouTube channel and her Facebook page. Recently, her renditions have gone viral on various social media platforms in India and Bangladesh because of her amazing voice quality. Aditi Chakraborty is a born music lover. She started her musical journey when she was three years old. She took her lessons from her parents. Gradually, she became the disciple of Sri Ratan Dash, Srimuti I.V. Banerjee, Sri Biman Mukhopadhyay, Sri Jyotileshwar Mukherjee, Sri Nirmal Leroy, and Sri Shujoy Chando. Presenting Aditi Chakraborty. <laughs> Sunny sun, 
छुके सीने सीने में कोई जैसे सदा देता है शाम से पहले दिया दिल का जला देता है है उसी की सदा है उसी की अदा कहीं Today, we have Dr. Brian Wonhersen interviewing Amari Lovins. Lovins is an American writer, physicist, and former chairman, chief scientist of the Rocky Mountain Institute. 
He has written on energy policy and related areas for four decades and served on the U.S. National Petroleum Council, an oil industry lobbying group from 2011 to 2018. Lovins has promoted energy efficiency, the use of renewable energy sources and local energy generation. He has frequently provided expert testimony and published 31 books, including Reinventing Fire, Winning the Oil End Game, Small is Profitable, Brittle Power and Natural Capitalism. Lovins and colleagues Hunter in 1982, made the documentary Soft Path, which received numerous awards from San Francisco International Film Festival, the American Film Festival, the Environmental Education Film Festival, International Environmental Film Festival, and the Columbus International Film Festival. Interviewing him today is Dr. Brian von Herzen, Herzen is the founder and executive director of the Climate Foundation, which upholds the vision and the mission to regenerate life in the ocean. Von Herzen leads the Climate Foundation's large-scale seaweed mariculture programs to develop sustainable food, animal feed and fertilizers, provide ecosystem life support, and sustain blue carbon sinks. Van Herzen was trained at Princeton University and the California Institute of Technology, where he was awarded the prestigious Herz Fellowship. I'm wondering, from your perspective, can we cut emissions fast enough and perhaps draw down carbon fast enough through nature-based ecosystems, etc.? Um, in terms of greenhouse gases, in time to sustain critical ecosystems like the polar regions, including what we're calling the Himalayan third pole, uh, from losing all of its ice. We, we need to do that with great urgency and uh, because the, the Arctic is melting and warming fast, so is the Himalaya. Uh, and uh, once that melting starts, it can take on a life of its own. Uh, but both on land and in the ocean, the opportunities for nature-based solutions are, I think, bigger than had been thought. And that's everything from multi-story agroforestry to perennial polyculture, uh, your work with the, the kelps, the seaweeds. Uh, it's, uh, it's really... A, a an underexplored territory. We're all striving to get to net zero carbon emissions, uh, you know, with these various approaches. Could we be considering uh, intermediate interventions that can uh, avert some of the climate catastrophes, catastrophes that we've been seeing in Pakistan and elsewhere before we get to this net zero emissions? In order to, for example, keep the Himalayas frozen. What are your What are your thoughts there? <laughs> I've just been learning from you about an idea for doing that that sounds interesting. I would like to learn more about it. But a little thought, I think, will quickly reveal that the more worried you are about climate change, the more important it is to invest our limited time and money judiciously, not indiscriminately, in things that will avoid the most emissions per dollar and per year. Because if we buy anything else, it will make climate change worse than if we had chosen the most climate effective solutions. That makes so much sense. And it sounds like with your work and the work of others, we're well on our way to at least finding some of the energy solutions that will help us get to um, net zero there. Uh, you mentioned nature-based solutions, and I'm curious to get your perspective on what are the keys to really enabling and scaling more of these nature-based solutions that can draw down even more carbon in the years to come? Well, they're all different, but uh, I think the, the common theme is emulating the way natural systems work. They reflect 3.8 billion years of design experience. You know, the 99-odd percent of stuff that didn't work 
got recalled by the manufacturer. The stuff that does work, as, as Janine Benyus showed in her wonderful book, Biomimicry, can teach us amazing things about how things are made, how they work, how they fit. And the more our agriculture, aquaculture, uh, fisheries, forestry, uh, emulate nature, uh, are designed the way nature works and treat nature as model and mentor, uh, the more likely they are to be efficient, durable, and very climate effective. And I'm wondering if there's a way with integrative design to combine technology development with, say, um, nature-inspired solutions and a balance where we have enough space for nature as well as enough space for humanity. Any thoughts there? Well, that's the kind of work that, that you're doing, and uh, I, I applaud it. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are many things you can do with nature a little better if you add some smart technology. Uh, and uh, that yours is a good example of how to do that. We can do a lot of the same on land, uh, and I'm I'm struck by uh, how blindingly obvious the solutions are in hindsight, like uh, what some have called intensive rotational grazing, where instead of letting your cattle or sheep or goats eat the grass everywhere all the time so it can never really develop roots properly, uh, instead, you move your critters around and have them graze intensively uh, in one place and then don't come back for a year, by which time the grass has developed roots that seed the perennials are, are all set for next year. Uh, and this all came from, uh, I guess, originally folks like Alan Savory observing wildlife on the Great Plains of Africa, uh, where the, the vast herds were hemmed and harried by predators, and they would stay together and churn up the ground terribly with their hoofs. But each hoof print was the reservoir for next year's crop. It, it held uh, water, dung, and seed. Uh, and then the herd would move on in its great seasonal round and not come back for a year. And that's why in that ecosystem, the grasslands flourished. In other words, it's the co-evolution and cooperation and collaboration of the grass and the grazing animals that make the ecosystem truly productive and durable. That's really wonderful. And I've heard that uh, some farmers are using radio collars and even drones to herd the cattle around from one day to the next and keep them moving. There was a traditional role for predators in keeping the herd moving. And this has been taken up by, uh, by radio collars and drones, from what I understand, in the latest mm -hmm. incarnation. <laughs> yeah, well, um, nature has a lot of good technology. We have some too. Let's get together. And what are your thoughts on uh, the future are balancing human needs with uh, the needs of nature? Well, it's a race with catastrophe. Uh, there are some good things going on. Uh, there is some greater attention to tackling deforestation and the underlying corruption uh, in Indonesia. But I think uh, what that will really take uh, is, is the work of people like Dr. Willie Smits, uh, an Indonesian who has figured out how to rapidly restore and sustain devastated rainforests and peat forests, using as the keystone species, actually, Aranga panada, the Bornean sugar palm, which grows also behind me in my jungle here in Colorado. Well, I agree. I, that makes, that's so vital in this world. And I think in many ways, we can't uh, solve the problems of our civilization with the same thinking that... Uh, it originated those problems to begin with. And I think that's a, a key aspect and perhaps we can uh, transform our own ways of organizing ourselves in ways that can be part of a hopeful future. To that end, um, do you have any closing thoughts to share with our audience at the Climate Benefit Concert on the most important actions people can take to enable changes to help regenerate healthy climate? Be informed, be active, 
be creative, uh, focus on solutions we have that work, don't get distracted by solutions we don't have or that don't work, uh, and make sure you share your views with friends and family, with your community, with everybody you can reach. We're all in this together, and we need to get better organized very quickly. Well, thank you, Amory. It's such a pleasure to see you and really appreciate your spending time with us uh, for the Climate Benefit Concert to uh, really support the efforts there and get us um, all working together towards uh, projects that will help to regenerate healthy climate. It's great to see you, and good luck with your teaching at Stanford and really moving the, the ball forward on developing integrative design to uh, be the kind of change that uh, the planet needs on a planetary timescale. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the watershed segment of our program. The name is evocative of the natural phenomena which marks the dividing line, an area where all water flows to a common location. And just like their natural counterpart, these artists today are the turning point. They have significant contributions in their field that have changed the notion of how people view music. In this segment, we will be presenting the works of well-renowned global artists who are bound by one common thread other than being the top of their fields. That is their concern for our planet, their concern about climate change, and their urge to do something about it. Today, they have donated their music to the cause to help raise awareness about the imminent danger of climate disasters at our doorstep. It is our hope that this watershed event will spur each and every one of you to take action. Let this be the watershed event that spurs us to action. In the watershed segment today, we introduce Jol Ergan. Jol, which in Bengali means water. The band took the inspiration for the name from the 1300 rivers that crisscrosses Bangladesh and controls lives and livelihoods. They are Jolly Gan, music of the water. The band is composed of visual artists and theater activists. Their lyrics are based on human stories. A number of the songs are written for them exclusively inspired by root level stories of love despair, courage, nature, abstract ideas and beliefs. The language is simple yet deep. It reaches human hearts and melts easily with their imagination. They also use a lot of metaphors that depict various colors and sides of human emotion. Their music composition is very much contemporary yet distinctive helping them to gain instant popularity. In their own words, we are the children of the soil where the river purifies us. We whisper the symphonies of this genre in soft and soothing voices. Dark at night, our dreams express themselves on a sailing boat in a land of natural abundance. To us, the rivers are like the lives flowing away undeterred. And sometimes they are poignant features of our ethnic roots. We sail away in the world of fantasy and imagination. We aspire to know why birds sing, why the sprinkling of water sounds harmonious. With questions like these churning in our minds, we hum the tunes and sing Jolly Gone in an unhindered voice. The team includes Rahul Anandu, Rana Sarwar, Abe Siddiqui, Muhammad Masum Mia, Malik 
यशोर जान गोपी देवनाथ हबीबुल्ला फरहान अर्जुन सूत्रधर एंड डी एच शुभ प्रेजेंटिंग जलर गान पाखीटा उड़े गल पाखीटा उड़े जाए दूरे दूर थे दूरे तेपान्तर मठ पेड़िए दूर थे दूरे शून्य मिलाय प्रकृति भलोबाशे पाखी प्रकृतर सतान से मानूष प्रकृतर सतान भूले जाओ लालित पालित हो प्रकृतर ही बुके प्रकृतर कोले কিন্তু আমাদের অত্যাচারে আমাদের অযত্নে বিরূপ হয়ে ওঠে প্রকৃতি আমরা ভুলে যাই আমরাও উড়ে যাই দূর থেকে দূরে আর দূরে মেঘদের মতো দূর থেকে দূরে আর দূরে শূন্য মিলাই
Oh, 